One of the stories that was very meaningful for me personally involved a young boy that I was working with as part of this other program. And so this young man uh, had lost his contact information for his mother uh, coming across the border. Uh, he made a very harrowing, difficult journey from the Honduras uh, and came through Mexico uh, up the channel that many of these young children come from, thousands of them really every year into the United States. And so he did not have the contact information that he needed. And these children, they depend uh, tremendously on the ability to make a couple of 10 minute phone calls uh, each week to family that are back in their home country. And he did not have that opportunity because his father was incarcerated and his information uh, in terms of the probably cell phone number uh, for his mom had been lost in his backpack along the way. So we, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I thought, oh my gosh, the Red Cross, uh, restoring family links. Why don't we explore the possibility of uh, interviewing this young man and seeing if we could identify uh, where his mother is and gather more information and actually contact her. So we opened a case. We communicate exclusively in Spanish, but there was a trust level that we had. Um, and because I've worked in a school setting, I really felt it would be important for him to share information about the local school, um, about his siblings. Uh, we had, I had him draw a map, uh, any kind of landmarks uh, that I could think of that might be helpful. And I think my understanding of the Restoring Family Links process gave me some ideas in terms of how we could put together information that would assist the search. And uh, many months went by, um, but ultimately his mother was located. Uh, it was a challenging search apparently because the area that he lived in had a lot of security risks to it. Um, but ultimately she was located. They were able to get in touch. She was able to give information about an aunt that lived in Florida that he had not provided. And so ultimately he was released to the sponsorship of the aunt. And uh, to my last contact uh, was continuing to live with the aunt. He's now over 18, but he was enrolled in a local high school uh, in the Florida area. So the story, that is a story that had a really happy ending. It was very, it was very rewarding. And I was so excited, as you can imagine, um, because you, you get discouraged and you don't know how long it's going to be. Uh, these things take time. You're never sure how it's going to turn out. And, and when you're dealing with a young teenager who is in very difficult circumstances and, and very frightened and extremely uh, anguished about the decision that he made to, le to flee his home country, perhaps for good reasons, um, but very, has a very precarious future in front, um, to hear that and to know how much he wanted to be in contact with his mother, uh, if only in some ways to explain to her why he had left, because he had left in the middle of the night, which is not unusual. Uh, and to kind of really beg her forgiveness and understanding and hopefully get her support for the decision that he had made. Um, to know that ultimately you were part of the process uh, and engaging his trust, it, it was great. It was really great. <laughs>